name is Leslie Grigsby. I'm the Senior Curator of Ceramics and Glass here at Winterthur. And we're very excited to invite you to come to our public opening of Uncorked Wine, Objects, and Tradition. The opening will take place on April 28th of this year, just a week or so from now. We thought we might show you a few little tidbits from in the show while we're still setting up. You're going to hear noises in the background, maybe a little hammering. The lighting, as you can perhaps tell, has not been finished yet. Uh, we have placed most of our objects, and we've started putting in the captions that will go with those objects as well. This particular case is one of my favorites, and it focuses on the idea that there were many games that were associated with drinking. You might, for example, go and play a game of cards and have a glass of wine to keep you company while you were having a pleasant evening out. This object, by the way, will be hanging up here above a wonderful punch bowl right here. This punch bowl was made in the Netherlands in the mid-18th century, so around 1750 or so. It's got cards on the outside and the inside, and it is of a type that we've excavated in many American archaeological sites, all the way from up in New Hampshire on down to Charleston in South Carolina. One of my particular favorite forms is one that's known as a puzzle jug. And you can see examples of puzzle jugs right here and up across the top. These were made any time from the Middle Ages onward. The examples we have, most of them were made in England, but we do have an example that was made in the 19th century in America. This type of jug was a game in itself. It has a belly that you could pour your alcohol into. It then always has holes on the neck. And you can see holes in the middle here and holes on the neck. The handles are always hollow. There's a hollow handle running up here and a tubular handle around the top with holes in it. The game was to plug certain holes so that you could get suction from one of those rim nozzles. And bets would be made to see who might be able to finish that drink most successfully. We have one piece here, for example, that has a drinking poem on it. It says, here gentlemen, come try your skill. I'll hold a wager if you will that you don't drink this liquor all without your spill or let some fall. Something you might be a little more familiar with is a type of trick mug. Looks pretty normal, kind of pretty on the outside too, but looks like a normal sort of mug from the outside. And if you look inside, I'm going to come a little closer to the camera. If you look inside, you might be able to see that there's a surprise hiding. There's a little frog in there. And I'm tilting this a few ways, hoping that there's one that will show it. There's a little frog, and when you would drink and you would get down to that level in the mug, the frog would become exposed and would surprise you, hopefully not enough to drop the mug. We have a, a second wonderful example right here that is just joining the collection. And you may be able to see on the outside some pretty decoration. On the inside, it has three kind of goofy-looking frogs in there, and these are pierced with holes through the head and the opposite end. And we think that when you would drink from this one, it probably made a whistling sound, which would have been an even more weird experience than the others. So these are some of my favorites. We hope to see you when you come to us on April 28th, all the way through January 6th, when we'll have open, corked, wine, objects, and tradition. Thank you.